Most genealogists I know use Excel at some time or other during the course of their research. It may be just a flat list which can be reordered um, and resorted like an interactive piece of paper, or they may use it for much more detailed calculations and appending some information. What I would hope to demonstrate through a series of short videos is how to move from Excel to creating a GEDCOM file through the use of what's behind Excel, which is called VBA. VBA it stands for Visual Basic for Applications, and it's simply a programming environment where you can write very explicit instructions telling Excel exactly what to do and how to reorder and parse information. So how do we get to that programming environment? Well, this is Microsoft Excel 2007, so it's not the latest version. So if you press and hold your Alt key, followed by the F11 key, you get into this environment. And this is probably how it'll look when you go in here for the first time. So there's two things I want you to do here, first of all. Go to your view, and you'll see here, immediate window. You can do Control G, and that brings you up this little window at the bottom of your screen, which will be very handy as you progress and you test things. Second thing I want you to do is go here, insert, and click module. Now you have a module here and a little window in which you can write your program, and you can rename that module to whatever you want. Microsoft Excel will not accept hyphens in this field, neither will it accept spaces. So let's call this my first module. The first little command I would like to introduce you to, and I'm going to call them commands, is debug.print. This basically does what you say, except it'll do it only within this immediate window. So I put in here debug.print, this is my first instruction, and when I hit the return key, that's exactly what it does. If I type debug.print 5 star 7, it gives me the answer 35. If I type debug.print mid open brackets, this is my first instruction, comma 6, comma 5, close brackets. This is for a later video, obviously, but I'm just basically showing you what can be done. You can't predict the outcome at the moment, but maybe you can see now. So as you progress, you'll see that this command mid is actually mid string. Later on, we have said 6, comma 5. What you will use mostly when you're using Excel is you will use variables. So a variable is actually a holder. You can call it whatever you want. In our case, later on, we might want variables for birth date, death date, emigration date, forename, surname, and we can name them all like that. The only thing that will be excluded from the names for variables will be some reserved command words, which are within Excel. So in this example, rather than using debug.print, the same command, I'm saying my test equals mid this is my first instruction, 6, 5. We don't see anything printed to the screen because we didn't use debug.print. However, my test now holds the answer. So it's like a little container called a variable, which actually has the answer contained within it. So what we've entered here is debug.print. This is the answer, comma, my test. So it's actually going to print the text. This is the answer, followed by whatever is contained in the variable. And there we are. So for most of our programming, we're actually going to use variables. They might be numeric variables, they might be text variables or string variables, and you can define them in a number of different ways. If you don't define it as a particular type of variable, Excel will help you and it'll basically just treat it as a variant where it can be any of those types of variables. If you're writing very large programs, that's going to make it run slower. Really for the application of moving from uh, Excel to JEDCOM, it's not going to matter a great deal. Okay, first of all, we need to understand what a JEDCOM file is and how it's constructed. So here we have a RootsMagic database. It has a single individual in it, a birth event, and a baptism event. And you can see both of those events use place details. There are no sources being used at all. There's no notes and there's no media. So I've exported that JEDCOM and I've put in a few separators just to show the different sections. And here we are. The first most important section in the JEDCOM file is the very first line. Zero space H-E-A-D, which is the header. The last most important line which must finish the JEDCOM is zero space T-R-L-R. -R. 
that's the trailer. You can see that there's almost 800 lines in between just with a single individual and two events. So let me quickly explain some of those. After the head, we have this section, which is basically saying the sources, roots, magic, the version number, um, various other pieces of information. Then we move down into the first individual. We have the individual number. We have the name in a first format, and then we have an, the name again in a different format, the sex. This is the unique ID, which is used in share merge. This is the family search ID. This is the change date. Then you move down into the event. So you've got the event, you've got some sentence structure, you've got the date. Again, you've got a sort date, the place, and anything prefixed with ADDR is actually place detail. Moving down again, you have the same basically for baptism. We shoot down a bit more. We then move into the place designations, which are at the end of the JETCOM file. Each place which has been geocoded by yourself or by the geocode all places function in the gazetteer will appear and be exported with your JETCOM file. In other words, it's preserved. After that section, towards the end of the file, you'll move into a long section which defines all of the events within Roots Magic. Now, those don't have to be defined on each JETCOM. But you can see that the, if there were differences here, you could actually set them in. So this is the, the birth, this is the death, christening, burial, and these little things here, obviously the B-U-R-I, that's the important thing when we're going to be writing uh, JETCOM files. I can understand how you might be thinking, writing 800 lines for a two event single individual is going to be quite a task. And it doesn't have to be. This is the same JEDCOM with all of the extra information cut out. And when I say cut out, this is still a very valid JEDCOM file. If I import this into Roots Magic, I will have exactly what I had before. No differences. So it has to start with the zero head. An individual has to start with this format and I have an individual number. The name, we only need this format of name. Roots Magic will tolerate this format of name. Sex, if we have it and know it, it's good that we include it. If we don't have it and know it, we should be attempting to bring that up to date in the, in the spreadsheet file before we create the JEDCOM file. It's gonna save us a lot of work later on. So now we move down into birth. So this is the, the JEDCOM abbreviation, B-I-R-T. This is the date the event took place. This is the place. And this is the place detail. So as we create JEDCOM files, we're going to create a combination of hard-coded stuff like this two space date. And then afterwards, this is the variable proportion, which we're going to lift from our spreadsheet and we're maybe going to manipulate in certain ways. And we'll learn how to do those things. So going back to Microsoft Visual Basic, each little routine that you write is going to be called a subroutine. And it begins with a sub and then the name for it. Again, you can't put hyphens in here. You can't put spaces in. You can use underscores if you want. And for now, each one will end with an open bracket, close bracket, nothing in between. And you hit return at the end of this. And you can see that Excel has put in the end sub, the end of your subroutine. So if you remember back to what we've done to begin with, we're using debug print. So this is your first little program. And what you do is you can go here and click the button here. You can press F5 or you can go to the run menu and do it from here. And you can see the result. It's exactly what our JETCOM is. So what we want to do is we want to open a file, give it a name, and we want to print this information out to a file. So how do we do that? So open is the command to create and open a file. And you can see inside the, the quotations, open, and I'm calling the file my first jed for output as hash one. Now, if you do that, you'll find that this will actually probably go to the root directory of whichever um, hard drive you're using, whether that's the, your C drive or your D drive or some network drive, that's where it's going to shoot off to. So better to use this format of open. So the difference here is I'm saying open this workbook dot path and which means add this on my first jetcom dot jet for output as one so basically all this is going to do is it's going to open the jetcom file within the directory which you're actually working with this workbook the next thing we have to do is we have to change all of the debug dot prints to a different format of print command which is going to print it to this file so let's get rid of this because we don't need anything in the immediate window anymore 
and here we have it so we're going to open a file it's called my first jed com dot jed for output and we've tagged it as file one because we could have several files here we could have another file which is tagged two another file which is tagged three and throughout your program you could be writing out to different files one of the examples that most people will understand within uh, roots magic is writing a log file so as you go along here if you program into a later program that if you have a problem or something you don't understand instead of writing that out to the hash one file you maybe write that out to the log file which is the hash two file you can look through that file at the end of things and see where your programming came across difficulties or things that it couldn't deal with so what we need to do is we need to change of all of our debug prints to print hash and the file number in this case this is one and then the comma and then followed by what you're going to write to that file the last thing we need to do here from a programming point of view because we've actually opened a file here we're going to write to the file here so naturally at the end of all that we need to close the file so close hash one is going to close only the my jedcom file if you had a log file you're going to maybe need to use close hash two as well next thing you need to do is save your microsoft excel workbook so flick back to microsoft excel go to file save as and you'll see in the right hand side you have excel macro enabled workbook that's what you want to save this as as you have now written macros in the background for excel to work on and if you just save it as a flat workbook you're going to lose those now if we go back to our code we want to run this code so we're going to go here again we're going to run the code runs in a flash we don't see anything in the immediate window here but if we now go back to the folder where our project is we can see we have our jedcom file and let's open that as a text file and there it is if we import that into roots magic we'll get exactly the same as what we had with our original database single individual two events there they are so that's the very basic basics of excel to jedcom transfer in the next video we'll start to look more at variables we'll start to look at how to interact with the actual worksheet itself and see how we can lift the information manipulate the information and write it out to a jedcom file Thanks for watching. If you would like to receive email notifications of follow on videos becoming available, please feel free to subscribe using the subscribe button on YouTube, vote the video up or down using the thumbs up or thumbs down icons, or leave your comments for myself or others possibly to answer and help you.